just going to talk about the garage electrics. I've got a little bit of a draft for the layout um, and also going to talk about some of the board pricing that I've got up compared to maybe building my own. I'm also going to cover a few of the issues I've got with a couple of models and the new Hornby Class 800 that I got from a well-known retailer wasn't quite set up as it should be for sound that's had to go back but uh, they were a little bit on the slow side of responding to technical requests so I ended up sending it back to another uh, well-known individual who is re-blowing it for me with uh, another set of sounds from uh, somebody else and I'll post a video of that once that comes back. I've also got an issue with the HST which is now hopefully resolved once I fitted it which is the, the chip wasn't working. Um, that's gone back to Digitrains where I got it from the from them at the uh, Great Electric Train Show. They've uh, sorted that out, turned it around, brilliant. Cheers guys. Um, apparently it was the 48 pin connector. Um, so hopefully this weekend I'll get that in, uh, which would be fantastic. Um, the issue with my class 143 uh, from Realtrack, um, hopefully I'm gonna take that apart. Uh, so the chip and the motor in the two separate units, uh, they're connected with like a multi-pin connector between the, the two units. I've checked the end which has got the motor in, I can't see a problem with that. I've now got to take the other unit apart, which is more complicated. They are difficult to open, um, and because of the way that the, the body is molded and the, the weights are in it, it becomes quite difficult and easy to damage, I would say. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to take that apart and have a look at that, and um, it'd be nice to get that going, because it's only really got around that. The temporary layout once, which I recorded, put on YouTube and then it probably stopped so um, and apparently if you put it around a too tight a radius it can damage those kind of it can damage the cables within it uh, with the flexing and um, which is rather annoying garage electrics now I've drawn a little bit of a mock plan I'm gonna send it to an electrician hopefully he can solve it the idea behind this one was uh, although it's fused in the main board in the house. I really want to have a separate fuse board in the garage just to give it extra protection. There's a single um, three-way light in the center of the garage. It delivers almost no light. It's uh, appalling. So what I want to do is re um, replace that, put uh, several strip lights. So I've got half the garage, which is going to be where the layout will be. I'm going to put like four strip lights across the LED ones. That give me plenty of light. Uh, on the other half, I'm going to put two more strip lights for sort of general use um, because we have the guinea pigs um, they will in fact have a single rose light just so for uh, in the evenings at night and we can put a, a light in uh, I've got some of those LIFX light bulbs so they can dim down at night and brighten back up again obviously it will save us um, a bit of energy usage rather than having the three lights on at the moment that we do during the evening because we give the guinea pigs light Anyway, uh, so the other thing is obviously we need to put a load of, um, obviously the other thing is we need to put a load more electrical sockets in. So uh, there's going to be a double close to the guinea pigs so we can uh, <laughs> run the heater. Uh, and then there's going to be uh, maybe two or three additional pairs near where I'm going to want to put power to actually supply power to the layout uh, and to the boards. Um, and then obviously it'd be handy to have an external. So we're gonna have an external one in there. Um, hopefully we're gonna get a quotes for that, but I don't see that happening um, anytime before February. So let's have a look at the uh, layout that I'm kind of considering. Um, I'll just pop it up on the screen. So basically um, the board's about 4.6 meters long and 2.5. Uh, five meters wide with an opening in the in the center we have um, several layouts I might be over doing this quite considerably because I'm trying to fit a lot in which is uh, I know less is more so um, I don't know uh, basically I've got uh, I want to have a continuous loop going through it so the um, generally the red track that you can see is is going 
in a in a loop along with some blue, and then I have a set of blue tracks which go up an embankment to um, a set of platforms which are raised, so the red loop uh, is running underneath. That ideally really allows me to run um, some locos, frame, whatever in a circular motion. I can take passenger trains up uh, and into a station, uh, and then I've also got a green set of tracks. Uh, the reason for the green ones is my son who kind of got me into the hobby. Uh, he's bought a lot of kind of Eddie Stobart stuff and I thought, oh, maybe we could do something about freight, bring freight in, bring freight out, um, do something along those lines. And then I've got the purple section down the bottom, um, which is just for a bit of a shunting variety, really. Uh, it's, I quite like using um, the KDs and the magnets. I've tried to keep everything at, like, kind of at least a radius two, straight radius three because I'm running some of the HSTs in the class A and I've got an APTE um, and I understand they don't particularly work very well if you're running tight so I'm hoping maybe I can get three or four uh, radiuses on there um, but I have to wait and see. Um, so anyway, that's basically the, the board layout. Uh, so I've created a baseboard uh, graphic which I'll pop up on screen. It's pretty basic um, but it was designed really just to send the dimensions and what I required to a couple of manufacturers of baseboards. Two have come back with a price. One was 940 quid, the other one was probably close to two grand. Another guy said, I'll get back to you. And another person says, can you give me a call? I'm um, already going, ooh, this is pretty expensive, so maybe I'll build it myself. Uh, watching a couple of videos at VR Junction, for instance, he built some really good stuff. You know, uh, just some softwood, squared off timbers get cut to size a timber merchant get some birch ply seems to be the material to use for the for the top i want to use something which is capable of withstanding you know quite hefty temperature swings um being a garage it's probably it could get under freezing uh, and it could probably get over 25 as well so it's um, I don't know. Anyway, if you've got any suggestions, let me know what, what I should be using for a garage. Um, I've seen a few sets of instructions. They don't look particularly difficult to build. Um, obviously, you want to make it sturdy, cross braced, so that there's you know limit the the amount of warping potentially which would occur. I don't want to happen what happened at heavy junctions when uh, he said that kind of. He didn't really notice it from the videos, but when he showed it from certain angles, you could really see him bouncing up and down. So I, I want to avoid that. Anyway. So I've not decided. Getting built, built myself. Building myself is going to be significantly cheaper than getting a made, but the quality of the made ones look very good. Uh, anyway, um, that's it for now. So thanks very much for watching, uh, and speak to you soon. Bye.